In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to work with curling classes inside of FontLab. And for that purpose, I've just opened up a font that I made here. And what you're going to do is click on the classes panel icon here to bring out this, this uh, window here. And to make a new class, basically just plus down here and new curling class. And then you have to write a little bit of code, but it's not that difficult. But let me just explain what, what class-based kerning is all about. What you want to do is you want to look at your, your font and find all the letters that basically have pretty much the same shape. Um, and just to make an example, I would maybe take the letter O, uh, the lowercase O. Uh, and then search for a lot of the letters that share some of the characteristics of that one and that could maybe be maybe like a lowercase e and a and c so let's try and write our kerning class here so I know that I want to have my letter o in there so I just write that and you follow that by an apostrophe and then space and that basically tells FondLab that the letter that you just wrote right here is going to be the king, it's going to be the leader of that group. And each letter that you write after that, um, in this case, lowercase a, is going to be a member of that group, which is controlled by O. And then I make a space, and then the C, and space, and E. So let's say that we're satisfied with this group right here. Then you have the, the accept button down here to the right and you can see that FontLab generates the group. Um, the yellow marking just indicates to us that this is the leader of the group and these are the members. And An important detail which is really important to remember is this field right here. Um, to explain that I'm just going to bring out my new metrics window right here and move this window down a little bit and I'm gonna write I'm gonna make sure first of all that I am in kerning mode and that I have class kerning enabled and I'm just gonna write the letters uh, that I have in my group um, and let's say we would want to kern all these letters in the group um, against a capital capital T and just current those at the same time up against the capital T. So I'm just going to make an example here. A T A and C T C and E. Whoops, E. Like that. So what this little area does is basically just imagine that the black dot in the middle here uh, corresponds to the capital T. And then the checkbox to the left of the black dot represents, in this case, the A, or just any of these characters that we have in our group. And the same goes for the one uh, to the right of the of the black dot, which then represents um, the letter of the, in the group to the right of this uh, capital T. So if not neither of these are checked. Um, it's not going to have the class kerning of this group is not going to have any effect. You're not going to be able to view it. So you're going to decide if whether or not the effect is going to be active on the left side, um, on the right side, or on both sides. So let's just start with um, the distance between the lowercase a and the capital T right here. Um, and ignore this distance right here. So I'm checking this one and let's just see what happens when I move that down here. You'll notice that the distance between the lowercase c and the capital T also changes um, and just gets the same value that I that I have right here. And the same goes for the lowercase e and the capital T over here. And of course the O here. So basically all these letters in my group have the same kerning value when they are next to the capital T because I've only kerned those up against the capital C right now. And you'll notice to the right we have sort of an overview here of our kerning pairs. And if you don't have that, you can click this icon here, which is going to just going to bring up the the list here. And you'll notice that it made the, our first kerning pair, which is uh, 
this group, which we know contains also, aside from the lowercase o, contains a, c, and e, and the value that they have when they are to the left of a capital T, which is negative 172. So we just saved ourselves um, three kerning pairs by having class-based kerning on this one. And just to demonstrate the right side, if I check that on and move the A closer to the T, um, the others will move accordingly, like that. And it doesn't matter which one of these that you move, they're all just going to share each other's um, values. So you don't have to move necessarily the um, what I what I like to call the king of the group or the leader. Uh, you don't have to move that. You can also move uh, one of the the members of the group, and even the king is going to obey that. To, to use a cheesy metaphor, um, so that's basically what class kerning is all about, um, and it's going to save you a hell of a lot um, of um, of work actually. So just remember to check these on, and when you're in metrics uh, kerning mode in here, in your metrics panel, just make sure that class kerning is enabled, and you should be good to go.